Well, is this is it sharing currently? I'm. Is it? It is shared, but it's not full screen. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, hold on. Okay, so may maybe I'll just go without the screen. I um, I normally do this on my tablet and. Okay, so uh, I want to talk about. Uh, joint work with Pasha Galashin about uh, these three topics, positroids, knots, and QT Catalan numbers. And down here, there's a cartoon of uh, these three kinds of objects. Here's, a, here's a, something called a playback graph, which represents a positroid. This is a trefoil knot. And this is the second QT Catalan number. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, a story about the Grismanian, which is probably pretty familiar. So the Grismanian, um, Kn over field F. So that's uh, as a set is the set of all um, subspaces of a fixed vector space of dimension n. Um, we look at the subspaces of dimension k. Um, we can represent it by k by n matrices of rank k modular row operations by picking a basis of such a um, k dimensional subspace. And uh, we'll be interested in two kinds of questions. One is a point counting question. Um, how many points are there in this uh, in this uh, Grassmannian when you're working over a finite field? So this is a finite. Uh, the answer is a is a finite number. And the second question is topological. What is the Poincaré polynomial? So what are the Betty numbers of the Grassmannian when you're working over complex numbers? So this is a really classical um, uh, story um, to tell you the answer. So we introduce this. Uh, we introduced this uh, Q analog of the number N, um, which is this polynomial in Q. Then the Q factorial uh, um, is just the product of the Q numbers. And then the binomial coefficient is, is this ratio. And so the result is that the number of um, points of the Grassmannian over a finite field is of, with Q elements. If you take this polynomial, this, uh, well, it's a rational function in Q. You substitute Q is the number of points and that's uh, of the finite field and that's the answer. It turns out that this is also a polynomial in Q, not just a rational function. Um, and it turns out that the, uh, um, the cohomology of the Grassmannian is supported in even uh, degrees and uh, the Poincaré polynomial after you sort of half the degree is also equal to the same polynomial. And um, one way, one way you can prove this is uh, um, by exhibiting the Schubert decomposition of the Grassmannian. So you express the Grassmannian as a disjoint union over affine spaces, and this decomposition works over any field, and you obtain both of these. Um, so this because uh, you know how to point count uh, an affine space, and this because the decomposition gives you a sort of even cell decomposition of the topological space. Okay, uh, another situation which is, has some similarities and some differences is, we uh, which is also classical, is you consider a hyper, uh, an arrangement of hyperplanes in a vector space, and then you consider the complement of those hyperplanes. And again, you can um, ask uh, what's the point count of this if, you're, if your vector space is a finite field and you take some, um, some hyperplanes in that vector space. Um, and, uh, and the answer is it's the characteristic polynomial. Um, where again, um, the polynomial depends on some parameter, you substitute the parameter to be equal to the cardinality of the, um, of the finite field. Um, and here we're thinking that the hyperplanes are defined sort of over the integers. And, and so there's sort of one answer and it works for all finite fields simultaneously. Um, you can take this, you could take this as a definition of the characteristic polynomial. Um, and the Poincaré polynomial is sort of similar. It, it's sort of basically the same. Um, it's also the same. It's, you just extract it from the characteristic polynomial as well. But there are some differences. There's, there's this, you have to sort of reverse the order of the coefficients and 
you don't do this uh, half in the degree. So it's possible for the cohomology of a, a co hyperplane arrangement complement to have cohomology in both odd and even degrees, unlike the Grassmannian. But, but in any case, it's, it's basically the same polynomial. So what are the reasons for this? So um, uh, one of the things uh, that's closely related to this is that the mixed Hodge structure on these two cohomologies, the cohomology of the Grassmannian and the cohomology of a hyperplane arrangement complement is pure. So let me say a little bit more about this. Um, so for, for an arbitrary complex algebraic variety, um, there's a canonical Deline splitting um, where here uh, the i cohomology splits into uh, pieces. So we have to work with complex coefficients here. So this is cohomology of complex coefficients. It splits into pieces uh, indexed by two other integers, p and q, which are the Hodge degrees. Um, so this decomposition is, is, uh, comes from something called the mixed uh, Hodge structure of this cohomology. And um, in the two cases, the Grassmannian, the, uh, the, um, the even cohomology of the Grassmannian is all in P equals I and Q equals I. Um, and in the case of the hyperplane arrangement complement is all in, in the I cohomology is all in I comma I as well. And that's why there's simple relations between the Poincaré polynomial and the point count. Well, that, that's part of, the, part of this, uh, it doesn't immediately imply it. Um, uh, so, so, for, so, uh, so, and why, why is there a halving? Why is it two I here and I here? Basically because the Grassmannian is projective. And when it's projective, P plus Q, uh, when it's projective and smooth, P plus Q is equal to, um, is equal to I. P plus Q is equal to cohomological degree. Um, in, in this case, the uh, hyperplane arrangement complement is smooth, but not projective. And, um, and it has a different behavior. Um, so all the spaces that we're going to talk about today satisfy something called um, Hodge, uh, they're all Hodge tape type. Yeah, so, so there is a question. Oh, yeah, I, I'm just reading the question. Does pure mean the IF cohomology is concentrated on some pair uh, P comma Q for all I. Um, uh, uh, so, so that is usually weaker than that. Usually pure means that the weight uh, means there's a single weight, which means that uh, P plus Q is a constant. So for each, for each fixed I, P plus Q is a constant, then it's, then it's pure. Um, so so all, the, all the spaces we'll consider are of mixed uh, Hodge tape type or mixed tape type. So where P is equal to Q and basically things of this type are things like projective spaces, um, affine spaces, uh, torus and things like that, or anything built up by sort of inclusion exclusion from the end. Something that's not Hodge tape type is, for example, an elliptic curve, which is not, um, you can't build up as uh, sort of, uh, it's not, um, there's no open subset that's the same as sort of C star. Um, so, so we can uh, take a bigraded Poincaré polynomial, um, but keeping track, if it's Hodge tape type, we just keep a track of I and P. Um, if it's not Hodge tape type, you have to, it's sort of a triply graded Poincaré polynomial, but we all we only have doubly graded things. Um, uh, for technical reasons, I'm gonna use this normalization um, of the polynomial. Uh, and, and this is sometimes called the mixed Hodge polynomial of the space. Okay, so, so I'm gonna talk about another space, uh, um, which is sort of a combination of the two, uh, two spaces that we've looked at. So the Grassmannian that we've looked at, and um, it's called an open positroid variety. And, and this is the definition of it. So it's, an, it's basically um, one way to think about it is that it's a hyperplane arrangement complement where instead of working in the projective space, you're working in the Grassmannian. So if I take projective space and I remove a bunch of hyperplanes, then that's a hyperplane arrangement complement. If I take a Grassmannian and I remove some hyperplanes, what kind of thing is it? And what, what does it mean to remove a hyperplane from the Grassmannian? Um, uh, the natural thing to do is to do something, um, uh, a hyperplane in the Grassmannian is to take some linear combination of the Pluca coordinates, which are the um, uh, sort of uh, K by K minus of the matrix and set that equal to zero. Um, uh, so this is, uh, in some sense, a pretty canonical thing to do. So the Grassmannian embeds into a projective space, the Pluca projective space, 
if you take a hyperplane in Fluker projective space and intersect with the Grassmannian, then you get some linear combination of Fluker coordinates. Now, this positroid variety, the, so the subset of the Grassmannian where these Fluker coordinates are non-zero, uh, this is not some random hyperplane arrangement in the Grassmannian, it's some very specific one. So these are this particular hyperplane, so this Fluker coordinate equals zero, and this particular one and this particular one. So this is the, um, the minor consisting of the first K columns, and then this is the second up to the K plus first and so on, and it wraps back around. Oh. Okay, so uh, an example uh, of uh, this hyperplane arrangement complement for K equals two and equals four is this space. And we would like to know um, uh, what the point catch is and what the Poincare pol polynomial is. Um, so the answer is formulated in terms of uh, rational Catalan numbers. So uh, the rational Catalan number is this binomial coefficient divided by the um, a plus b, um, defined only when GCD of a, b is equal to one, includes the usual Catalan numbers. And a uh, uh, classical theorem is that it counts the number of thick paths inside a rectangle. So here I've drawn the three by five rectangle and I've drawn the sort of main diagonal and I can't all lattice paths, so all dick paths that stay above the, strictly above the main diagonal, except at the endpoints. And in this case, C35 is seven, the seven of these objects. Um, and now I want to ask what the Q analogs are. And uh, if, uh, if I have a binomial coefficient, there's this natural Q analog that I previously um, introduced. It, uh, the Schubert decomposition um, so this is the point count of the Grassmannian. Schubert decomposition shows that there's actually also this expression. Um, it's a polynomial and it's uh, the generating function of uh, all lattice paths in an A by B rectangle. So what is the Q analog of this uh, rational Catalan number? And there are so two options. One is to generalize this first formula by replacing the binomials uh, with the Q binomial. Um, and there's a second one, which is to take the generating function of the um, of all the dick paths. Um, so we can calculate it this in this case. Uh, so a equals three, b equals five, and uh, we'll get this polynomial if we use the sort of algebraic definition. Um, but we'll get this polynomial if we use the um, dick path definition, so the combinatorial definition, and um, the, so there are two different Q analogs of the rational Catalan number or, and or, or of the usual Catalan number. Um, well, at least two different uh, um, uh, Q analogs and they're both pretty natural. They both give you positive uh, integer polynomials. Um, so the, uh, our theorem with uh, Pasha Galashin is that um, these two are the point count and Poincare polynomials respectively of, uh, of this uh, open positroid variety. Um, uh, so this Grassmannian where certain hyperplanes are removed. Um, but, so this is not exactly right. There's some fudge factor in front, um, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, but basically they're the point count and the Poincare polynomial respectively, and they're not the same. So point count and Poincare polynomial isn't, um, uh, oh, oh, um, uh, Thank you, Francois, um, for clarifying the um, GCD condition. Um, so, uh, so the reason for this, uh, one explanation for this is that the, um, uh, the, um, the cohomology of this space, so this Grassmannian hyperplane arrangement complement, this open positroid variety, it's not pure. So, so there's sort of different answers for point count and Poincare polynomial. And therefore it's interesting to look at the bigraded Poincare polynomial. Um, so before that, uh, one unusual corollary of this is uh, just if you take this number and divide it by the point count of the Grassmannian, you can ask um, what's the probability that a random point in the Grassmannian belongs to this uh, open positroid variety? And you get this answer, which is very simple um, ratio, um, depending on Q, the cardinality of a finite field. Um, uh, and it doesn't depend on K. And this is. Uh, we, we don't have a simple explanation of this right now. Um, okay, so uh, the rational, um, so to define the sort of bi-graded version, version, we have this rational QT Catalan number. Um, so the 
uh, the Catalan case was introduced by Garcia and Heyman. And, uh, and I'll give you the, this uh, combinatorial definition as a generating function of the area of, the, of a dick path and, um, and another statistic called dint. So area, area is what you think it is, is the number of boxes um, uh, between the, is the number of boxes underneath, between the dick path and the diagonal. And dimp is this statistic, which I won't um, do that closely, but basically here in, in this dick path here, um, uh, we have a T to the one because, there, because this, there's this horizontal and this vertical line and it's sort of there, there's a line parallel to the main diagonal that, um, that intersects these two and you count it once. Um, so you count sort of pairs of horizontal and vertical lines in a particular order such that the main, some line parallel to the main diagonal intersects it. And that gives you your second statistic. And so the, our, our theorem is that the bigraded Poincaré polynomial um, is up to a simple factor given by this QT rational Catalan number in this GCDKN equals one. Um, so, so just to comment a little bit about it, there's a, there's a way to get rid of this factor is that there's some torus action and you can quotient it by it. Um, and the reason what, the, basically the reason for this GCD condition is that this torus doesn't act freely and then you need to do um, something more complicated in general. Um, one corollary of, the, of our work is the QT symmetry of these polynomials. And another one is the unimodality keeping total degree fixed. So if you, you look at, this is a polynomial in Q and T. If you fix the total degree in Q and T and you look at the coefficients then you get a unimodal sequence. Um, and, and these properties uh, um, for the Catalan case are known um, and the, the symmetry is uh, for uh, arbitrary and B is um, due to mallet. Um, and uh, what, this, uh, what this, these corollaries rely on are some geometric results, uh, which come from the fact that the, this space has, a, has something called a cluster structure. In fact, it's something called a locally acyclic cluster structure, and it satisfies some version of the Lefschetz theorem, but a more complicated version called curious Lefschetz. Um, so let me, so, so, so far I've only talked about this uh, positroid side and, uh, and the um, Catalan side. I now want to talk about the, uh, the proof, which, is, which goes via knot theory. Um, so what we, what we do is we construct um, some knot for uh, corresponding to this positroid variety, and then we relate the cohomology to certain knot invariants. So let me give the general setting. So we start with um, uh, uh, the special linear group, SLN, and, and B, these are the Borels, the subgroups of upper and lower triangular matrices. So G mod B is the flank variety. Inside the flank variety, there are things called open Richardson variety. They're, they're given by this sort of expression. So they're, uh, they're given by taking a Schubert variety and intersecting with an opposite Schubert variety. Sorry, a Schubert cell. Um, uh, so a Schubert cell being just an affine space and intersecting with the opposite um, one. So these things are open, uh, open things. Um, hence I say call them open Richardson varieties. Um, and the index, uh, so this intersection is non-empty only when V and W um, form an interval in Bruja order. So the index by pairs uh, intervals in Bruja order of the symmetric group. Um, and in, in a special case, uh, they're isomorphic to this uh, open positroid variety that um, I, I explained. Um, I won't give the exact translation. Um, which is, which is listed here. So for some particular permutations. Um, and uh, so previously I said, it's important to know when uh, there's a natural torus, the diagonal matrices inside G and um, this torus acts freely basically when this, uh, when this permutation W times V inverse has a single cycle. Um, so the, uh, so our, our theorem, um, so the previous theorem about, um, QT Catalan numbers is a special case of our the a theorem where we, we compute the uh, uh, bigraded Poincaré polynomial of um, an open Richardson variety, basically. And to describe the, to describe the answer, um, I'm gonna describe uh, how to construct a link from the information of a pair um, 
you, uh, uh, you, oh, um, uh, VW inside, uh, uh, an interval VW inside Bruja order. So first of all, um, if I've got a permutation, I, I, I write a reduced word for it. And then I lift it to the brave group by um, replacing all the crossings by some uh, particular choice of positive crossing. So always um, the upper strand is always over the bottom strand at every crossing. So this lifts this uh, permutation to the braid group and it's the same element in the braid group for every reduced word. So this gives me a braid lift. And then if I'm given a pair, an interval in Bruja order, what I do is I take the positive braid lift and then I take sort of the negative braid lift of the inverse. So which is just the inverse element in the, um, in the braid group. And I just concatenate them. So I multiply them in the braid group. So this gives me a, a braid that's neither, in general, neither positive nor, um, nor negative. And then I close it up and I will make a link. And this link is, we call this link a Richardson link. It's indexed by a pair of permutations. You can do this for any two permutations, but the ones that come up in our, our result, the ones that appear to be interesting are the ones where B and W are um, form an interval in, in Bruja order. So this is, this is some uh, topological object that's uh, just um, related, to, related to this data, B and W. Um, and the number of components of this link, the number of co uh, connected components, sorry, the number of components of this link is just the, um, uh, is just the number of cycles in WV inverse. In particular, it's a knot if the number of cycles is one. Okay, so, so given, uh, given a link, there are some not invariants that you can associate to it. Uh, one of them is the Humphrey polynomial. Um, and it's defined by this skein recurrence. So uh, the unknot is given the value one. And if you have three knots that are locally re related like this, so, so it's defined with oriented um, link diagram. So you give me an oriented link. Then if you locally, if you locally you take a link and you sort of compare the three different links where you have a positive crossing, a negative crossing, and no crossing. Um, then the, in, this invariant for the three links is related by this uh, skein relation. And, and it's known that this, uh, this unique, this together with the normalization uniquely determines the, um, this P of L. Uh, so this, this P of L only depends on, it depends on A and Q. Um, the Q is supposed to match with the Q before. Um, it turns out that there's a, quite a bit more complicated invariant, something called uh, triply graded link homology or kovano forsansky homology, which is a link invariant generalizing this. And it's, uh, it, ha it has actually three variables, A, Q, and T. Um, the definition is, is much more involved of this invariant. Um, and, and, uh, and our theorem is that the, the, the point count, the point count is, uh, obtained from the Humphrey polynomial of the link by extracting, um, so this, this guy is a Laurent polynomial in A and Q to the half, and we extract, we extract the coefficient of the top degree of A, um, and that's going to be a polynomial in Q, and that's the point cut. Um, and if we want the mixed Hodge polynomial, so now it depends on Q and T, then we do the same thing. We, we take a particular power of A, and we extract it, and we get a um, we'll get some polynomial in Q and T, and that's the mixed Hodge polynomial. And, um, and for, uh, for particular, so for this open uh, positroid variety, this particular choice, um, uh, the link is uh, something called uh, torus uh, knot. And for that case, this, uh, this has been computed um, and compared uh, by Mallet uh, with the QT rational Catalan numbers. And that's where our result comes from. Uh, so, so uh, when when the link has uh, more than one component, there's sort of we have to do something technically a little bit more complicated here. Rather than quotienting by t, which is not free, we have to take equivariant cohomology. Um, uh, in in sort of work that we did sort of um, uh, after after this fifth sec submission, um, we we studied other other um, uh, open positive varieties, not the one that's sort of right. 
sort of top dimension in the Grassmannian, and we obtained um, uh, combinatorics of dick paths rather than all dick paths. We have dick paths that sort of go above some convex shape. And um, let me mention that this kind of combinatorics, uh, at least conjecturally, is related to these uh, um, other recent other recent works, um, uh, which which sort of extend the uh, rational um, uh, Catalan combinatorics to a more general setting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are a bit, thanks. It was an absolutely great talk. We are a bit short on time though. So maybe just one quick question. Yes, Francois. Uh, Thomas, are you yes. able to use your approach to uh, prove that uh, the, these uh, AB Catalan uh, QT are actually sure positive in QT? Um, no, right now, uh, right now we don't have, uh, we only extract the Catalan part of it. We don't- No, we no, don't no, I, I mean that Catalan part is yes. a QT polynomial, but actually, it's a sure QT polynomial. If you express it oh. in two variables, it's sure positive. Oh yes, I, I think I think that's the that follows from the unimodality. So it corresponds uh, to an SL two representation. Yes, that's actually what we proved. Yeah. So the symmetry it, unimodality is an SL two. Yeah, yeah. That's the yeah. SL two part that I was thinking. Yeah. Of. So that's yeah. that's what I meant when I said we had a left shift type result. Yeah. And is this true for the convex uh, generalization? The, the, uh, your final it, statement. It, yes, it would. It would follow automatically with the uh, with the caution that we don't um, uh, we don't know yet that um, the cohomology is even in that case. Mm -hmm. So if it uh, so if what whatever the answer so whatever the the cohomology we know is an SL2 representation, but we don't know that we, uh, there's a possibility that half powers of Q and T is, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying in the, in the expression. Um, we, we, we think that they aren't, uh, but, uh, but we don't know how to prove that yet. 